if you remember from the last video, I had done a kind of uh, gross belt tension study. And I, I'd say that in multiple uh, definitions. Um, <laughs> but essentially, I found out since then that the steps I was using uh, to adjust belt tension were way too coarse. Uh, essentially, each, uh, each step, I think I had maybe six or seven different steps, was a half rotation of an M3 0.5 millimeter uh, screw on the idlers, uh, which ended up being a half millimeter of belt uh, stretch, essentially, per step. I found since then, uh, doing some more studies, that this is way too coarse. Um, essentially, that uh, data that I had previously covered uh, all the way from really loose all the way to so tight that you stretch your belt and you, it will never be the same again. <laughs> um, so um, since then, essentially, I found out that one, I needed new belts, so I replaced them all. Uh, two, I found out that my um, drive pulleys on my motors weren't actually quite concentric. I would remember this from the past, uh, but I hadn't really thought about it. I didn't show up in prints. But when you're trying to get even belt tension between uh, both core XY belts, which is really important for testing like this, um, essentially if you move the tool head, um, you, you get it perfect, then you move the tool head, and then in wherever the new tool head position ended up being, um, the pulley was in a slightly different position of rotation, and then that would essentially mean game over. Uh, your belts would not be the same tension anymore. So to remedy that, I've replaced both my drive pulleys with official gates pulleys, as well as I replaced the tooth idlers um, before it was some kind of China GT2 uh, 20 tooth idlers. I put some gates, one on, gates ones on there as well. Um, again, it's not necessarily needed, but since I'm doing this data collection and I want those things to not be a factor in the overall test, I just did that. Um, the rest of my gantry is the same. Uh, other than I did relocate the accelerometer closer to the um, kind of on the x-axis uh, carriage, uh, closer to the MGN rails, so hopefully this will isolate any um, kind of stiffness in the gantry uh, from stiffness of the actual tool head itself. I want to deal with those separately. I don't want the kind of different effects kind of muddying the data up. So. Um, Next, let's look at some of the belt tension information I've been looking at. So as I mentioned before, in the Voron community, there's always been the question of how tight do I tighten my belt? And you know, sometimes the words have been something like tighten it to 85 hertz or tighten the Z belts to 150 hertz or um, tight enough but not too tight or uh, you know, looser than you think. All those things are just horribly inadequate for helping someone who has no idea of how a tight belt should be to actually get a good result. Um, and I think the accelerometer data that we're seeing from the Voron community um, who have been running the resonance tests have kind of shown that. Um, the resonant frequencies are, are quite variable um, and we're finding out that some people have their belts too tight and that shows up on the prints as um, that two millimeter banding essentially uh, a l vertical uh, lines on the prints on smooth surfaces um, due to the pitch of the belt. And so uh, I, I took a step back from the last uh, last time and I ended up trying to find out okay what does Gates recommend as far as belt tension? How do they recommend measuring that tension? And then also um, from the other places you know across the community um, not in the Voron one but say in Prusa or, or you name it, whatever uh, 3D printing community um, there is out there, I wanted to see what other tensions people were using. And I saw a lot of different uh, things. But first of all, um, here is the uh, PDF uh, for the Gates kind of GT2 uh, line of belts. Um, again, this is for really lighter uh, duty stuff. If you look online, there's other uh, belts that they have for you know larger loads. Um, but if we go ahead and go down uh, to um, this section right here, let's see, belt tensioning, um, you'll find out um, that they have some guides here um, for how to calculate belt tensioning and, and span lengths and all those types of things. And that's the key here. If you're going to tighten to a certain frequency or tension or deflection or anything like that, you need to specify uh, this value right here, the span length. Because if you don't specify the span length, it's the same thing like, um, you know, essentially a guitar string being, you know, twice as long or, or shorter. Uh, 
the frequency is going to change based on that span length essentially. Um, so what I ended up doing for my Voron is I've ended up using a reference value of 150 millimeters because that's a typical you know maximum length that a calipers would have that someone would have on hand from the front idler to the essentially the bolt that the XY joint goes through or, or the uh, XY the tooth idler on the XY joint is so that gives you a very defined span length um, here since our pulleys are essentially the same uh, dimensions we don't have any angles or anything like that we don't have to worry about um, this calculation essentially it's just um, the distance from the from one axis to the next so that makes it simple um, and so however this calculation here is really l related to deflection which is kind of hard to measure most of us don't have the force gauges or anything like that to, to measure it um, so if you scroll down um, some you'll see that they have essentially this sonic tension meter and essentially this is a glorified phone app um, that you have on your phone so um, I looked up this some more and you know here is the the manual for that uh, they talk a lot about you know the different things, the different settings, which don't all, all apply. Um, so again, the same span length formulas, um, tensions, etc. Um, and then they get to this ascetic, essentially the the theory behind it. And I found this formula especially um, kind of confusing. Um, there's strange, I don't know. It's not they're using millimeters and uh, meters and different things together that units don't match. Um, so I ended up just saying screw it um, and I compared this to string vibration which is essentially the same thing um, and both formulas ended up coming out with the same values um, so really the formula we're looking for here um, is this for st string under tension T with linear density uh, so we're we have a constant linear density with the gates belts at least I hope <laughs> if you don't then you should probably return your gates belts and get something else uh, or get a new batch or something like that. But um, essentially you have your, your length, um, your tension, and essentially your grams per meter type of value here. Um, and again, if you, if you were eagle-eyed, you'd notice down here, it does give some values on grams per meter for a GT2 uh, two millimeter pitch belt. I found this to be not accurate at all um, compared to um, the mass uh, per meter that I had um, on hand and some other people had reported um, so I just used uh, values that I calculated myself based on the belt I had on hand but um, the key thing to note here is that this all depends on using the base kind of frequency which is essentially assuming the belt is uh, you know all there's, it's the base harmonic, um, there's not the correct term, but essentially um, the frequency here is twice x, the frequency here, the frequency here is 3x of that, so we're looking for this base, this base frequency here. And that's where you can get hung up if you use some kind of apps on your phones that only display, say, a single frequency, because sometimes, and I realize this, this base frequency should be more prominent and it should be picked up, but in reality, depending on the frequency, sometimes that's not the case um, maybe your phone's microphone isn't as sensitive in that range or something like that uh, but I found out that sometimes um, essentially my phone app displays the wide range of frequencies and it shows peaks at different frequencies um, and there you can see sometimes maybe you know 240 Hertz will pop up as the most prominent frequency but then you'll see that maybe there's um, you know maybe that's actually this the the fourth uh, kind of multiplication of that and then in reality your base frequency is only 60 Hertz uh, which is the value you should use when calculating um, your if I go back um, your tension so that's how you calculate the tension the question is what tensions are good and what tensions are bad and that's where we need to look at some more data uh, but let's show you some calculations there uh, just one sec so here's some quick calculations, and most of these are all um, pulled directly from the Gates uh, manual, essentially. Um, but I wanted to see what they recommended based on our belt speeds um, and based on our essentially torque uh, loads and what we needed. Um, so here, um, 
you know, again, we're using two millimeter pitch felts. Um, this torque load is based on um, a boron printer accelerating um, essentially a afterburner and x-axis because one of these belts is essentially moving it diagonally um, at uh, I believe it was 10,000 uh, millimeters per second squared acceleration so a little high but at the same time it doesn't include a lot of the losses so this you know maybe a little high maybe a little low but it's the ballpark I'm using now um, again uh, the RPM is based off of the speed in this case, we're saying our max speed is 300 millimeters a second, which we could go higher than that, but that's the value we're using here. And again, most of our drive pulley is um, in boron, at least for the V1 and V2 are 20 teeth. So you calculate all of that, and essentially it gives us a minimum tension of 2.1 pounds. Uh, frustrating to have English units, but 2.1 pounds. Um, they mentioned that their general target is actually 10 which is a lot higher than 2.1. Um, so I wasn't exactly sure you know, where we'd fall into that range. It was interesting looking through some of the Prusa forums and some other forums um, that they seem to be recommending somewhere between the two and five pound range. Um, I didn't find a clear answer on when that Z, or not Z artifact, but when the two millimeter pitch uh, vertical line artifacting shows up. Um, that is something I want to find out. Um, and hopefully, with some of the community, we can get some more data on that to see consistently across a variety of uh, at least boron printers um, what tension value that's starts occurring at. My hypothesis with this is that essentially as your um, build size gets up or gets increased, um, your max tension should be the same for all printers essentially, at least for all boron printers with the same belt path. Um, but the stiffness of a longer belt is essentially smaller. So if you um, double the length of the belt, the stiffness drops in half. And if you remember uh, from essentially natural frequencies, which aren't exactly the same, there's some caveats there, but um, as the belts, as the stiffness uh, goes down, then your frequency changes. Um, so I'm not sure if that has an impact, but we'll see as we move forward, uh, as we get more data. Um, You'll see also here I, I put in that uh, span calculator which essentially says if both your uh, pulleys on both ends are the same, um, which in this case they basically are, then you can essentially ignore it because it's, it's the same as the drive center distance. Um, let's see here. The other thing I did, um, these are those two calculations I mentioned earlier. Um, one of them is based on the um, Gates uh, sonic calculator essentially, and the other one is based on the st string theory um, calculations from Wikipedia. You'll notice if you have, if you end up having the same inputs, you'll get the same outputs. But what's cool here is you can specify. I should probably highlight this um, blue as well. Blue is an input cell. If you, um, so if at 150 millimeters um, span length, you are at 50 hertz you have a 0.4 pound uh, tension essentially. So um, it changes a lot depending on um, the frequency and depending on the length. And so depending on what tension we need to target, there may be a different length other than 150 millimeters. Um, you know, because obviously if we did like 20 hertz over 150 millimeters, that's really hard to pick up with the phone microphone. So we can tweak those values to get a kind of repeatable test procedure that people should be able to pick up and, and pluck their strings and hear a tone um, and get the correct tension. So, And with that, I'm going to wrap it up for today. Uh, this video has gone on long enough. If you stuck around until now, thank you very much. Um, again, this can get kind of dull, um, but my goal with this is to help educate the community um, and myself, because I'm learning here too, um, how to properly measure belt tension. And then as we move forward, um, we can kind of have an ideal target that can hopefully go across different boron printers and then maybe across different core XY style printers and different Cartesian printers as well or whatever printer you may have. Um, the goal here is to further the hobby and the knowledge base of the community um, so we can have better prints moving forward because belt tension really does play a very critical role in how our prints turn out. Um, so if you enjoyed, uh, let me know. Thanks. Bye.